Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal of Critical Channel Great YouTube and welcome to another album of the week. This is episode number 147 and today's episode is focused on technically the self-titled debut album from Finnish cult metal band Oz. Uh, again, it was originally released through Crack Records in 1982. But then the same year, it got released through Typhon Gramophon's uh, sub-label, Wave, which they gave it a different title. And it's the only one with that cover and everything because the original Crack Records pressing had an actual band shot of them, which you can kind of see already anyways, which is actually a pretty good upscale uh, of the album cover and everything, which I did myself just for this video so you can at least get the best possible image to at least just to look at and everything because again uh, they're not easy to really come by I'm only out in the wild here in the United States however online you probably can find decent at least copies that are in decent shape for at least somewhat of a decent price but there we go but more on that so let me just get into, of course, Oz and everything. Again, these guys uh, go all the way back to 1977 and originally were, at least, were from uh, Nakila uh, Sarakunta. Hope I pronounced all that correct, uh, correctly. Uh, Finland. And the lineup that, that it began is basically the lineup uh, pretty much for this album right here. The album right uh, here, again, the self-titled debut and... Uh, one ended up being, uh, you know, released through uh, Typhon Gramophon's own Wave. Uh, it'd be the only album uh, with the original lineup from 1977 and to, of course, uh, to this year of 1982. So it's the only recording with the original because, again, it would change after this album. But, again, more on that. So, I guess, with the, again, uh, just to, to kind of name off the guys in the band right now that are on this album. Again, we got, of course, Ape D. Martini, who had been, again, one of the more consistent uh, members in the band. Uh, again, the vocalist. Uh, he actually goes by a different name for this one, which is Eero V. Oz Hamelanian. Hamelanian? I, I hope I pronounced all that correctly. You got, of course, Pekka Mark uh, on drums, which, of course, he's best known as Mark Roughneck. Who I also follow on Facebook, and he he and Ape D Martini were the most consistent members in the band to the point to where Marf Ruffneck is actually to this day the only original member left in Oz. However, the only two members on this album that are at least that were with the band since 1977 uh, that only recorded this album again would be gone after this album are of course is the bass player, which is Tano. Vahavera, hope I pronounced all that correctly, and of course, uh, Kerry Elo on guitars. Um, these are the only two members that would be present for the debut album and would be gone after. Again, they this is the original lineup, and this is the only existing album with the original lineup. So, let me just get into straight into at least the, uh, the track listing here, since, again, the track listing is pretty much the same for both pressings. So... Uh, again, uh, the songs, of course, beginning with Hey You, uh, Call From Your Eyes, Run In The Line, uh, Rather Night, Saturday Night, Secondhand Lady, In The Chains, and Capricorn Man. Again, and all the time length pretty much uh, is at least roughly around 33 minutes and 18 seconds. So it's still a relatively short album, though slightly shorter than, of course, the follow-up album, the more popular album by Oz, that, of course, being, well, Fire In The Brain. So... This is your debut album right here. Now again, when it comes to any sort of legendary band in Oz, or obviously a legendary band in both Finland and Sweden, again, even what uh, being friends with Quorthon of Bathory, who again, uh, rest in peace too to him, uh, who of course has been dead since the mid-2000s. Um, maybe early 2000s, I don't know, but I think he's been dead since the mid-2000s. Mid again, Bathory and everything, but he of course, uh, Quorthon is the reason he became good friends with them because of his dad, I think, helped uh, produce their albums and so on. Uh, also pro provided his, of course, uh, his hand and everything to, of course, to fire in the brain and so on. All great. But still, 
these guys, they are definitely seen as, as a legendary band in both Finland and Sweden. So when it comes to any sort of legendary band, uh, whether it be, you know, let's say like a Saxon, Motorhead, Judas Priest, uh, except uh, maybe even, uh, you know, like Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath. Every one of these bands, they all have a beginning and sometimes they are considered great uh, legendary beginnings or they are at times considered rough beginnings and Oz kind of follow they, they, they fall under the ladder which is basically the rough beginnings because this album right here while when you, depending on who you ask they're all they're, they're gonna trash to this album they're gonna trash it but personally for me and if you ever meet any people that kind of at least somewhat have the same similar mindset as I do, you know, you're going to be at least at least somewhat favorable to the album, but and, but at least still somewhat recognize that it's far from the most uh, realized record. It's definitely a rough album in places, you know, it's not the most ma magnificent, you know, the magnificent album. Again, when... You go and you listen to, to let's say, other albums that they have released. For example, like Fire on the Brain or Third Warning. Or even to an, uh, to an extent, Decibel Storm. To, of course, even classic recent releases. Like, for example, Burning Leather. It is such... You go back and you listen to the first album. While, yes, there's some characters of at least of what you might get after this album. But again, it just sounds at least a little bit rough. It's not fully realized. There's not a whole lot of complete conviction in places. It just feels a little middle of the road and my time's very average compared to, of course, the blistering new wave or bridge heavy metal sounding of, of course, Fire on the Brain or the straight up uh, classic. Just It's all classic metal. Again, you might as well consider Oz to being Finland's answer to Saxon in a way or... Or even at times, maybe Raven or Tank, you know, or some of those kind of bands. You know, it is their answer. They bait, If they were from Britain, they would have been easily uh, part of the new wave or British heavy metal movement. They at times very much are in the same line of, let's say, you would hear on like Meat Records or even Ebony in a way. They just have, they are just a very classic, traditional heavy metal band that, of course, has a lot of the classic traits that you expect from them. But they do it, but they did it in a way that it was at least... Had a lot of conviction, but that was at least for those who at least had somewhat of experience of listening to an album like Fire on the Brain. You know, you heard that that kind of uh, stuff on Fire on the Brain. That's what it, it oozed with. The first album, not so much, but that doesn't mean that the, uh, the, the fact that it's at times middle of the road or average doesn't mean that I'm saying that it's a terrible album. Far from it. It's just not as nearly as remarkably great as what will come afterwards, but it's far from being the complete stinker that some people tend to make it out to be. Still, even the recording and production is very raw. But again, if you look at it from at least from a young and hungry standpoint, and you look at it from the period that it is, it really tends to, it's a really good, uh, uh, time stamp it's a good sort of time capsule into a band that sounded you know young and hungry they didn't really care whether or not uh they're, they're trying to make something that's just clap that's gonna be you know a masterpiece they just want to get into the studio hammer it down and make sure that that they put out a record that at least can get their name across and make that you know and just Use it as a way to promote them. That's usually what albums are, are ways to kind of promote them. Because again, I can probably can imagine that the live shows were somewhat pretty good. Again, it's just typical of the new wave or British heavy metal era. Which again, can, any sort of country almost can fall under this. Even though technically it's, it was most, uh, again, the whole new wave or British heavy metal was mostly uh, territorial to at least... Uh, and very much native to, of course, you know, well, to Europe, mostly Britain and everything, or at least anything that fall that fell under to, of course, uh, the Queen and the whole British uh, uh, government and whatnot. And, and in some way, that kind of included Ireland and Scotland in a way, if you really go on. Anything that fell under uh, the overall commands of at least the Queen in a way, or whatever she had at least, that kind of... It seemed to have really made bands kind of fall under that. So, but 
still it was such a huge movement that it it, it became completely uh influential and it it, it was a a phenomenon and that phenomenon it, it reached to of course to the, some of these countries even here in the united states so any band from that sort of late 70s to the early 80s were all in some ways were kind of somewhat got uh, that fell under this phom- uh, phenomenon that got swiped up in it and oz kind of is one of those that kind of fight up again they are the finnish new wave of british heavy metal band and they are a classic one but then this album kind of tends to really being a good document of that because every one of those bands had rough beginnings in some way, shape, or form. But it really, it's all about at least a sincerity and overall personality that at least runs through. That usually made some of those albums at least somewhat really interesting and very listenable. But again, that doesn't mean that uh, that you're going to call the sound as being one of the greatest ever. It just means that that's kind of the outlook you're supposed to have when listening to an album like this. It's a time capsule. So... And this album, it sure has plenty of its rockers. You get plenty from Hey You to uh, Call From Your Eyes to Run In The Line uh, to, of course, uh, Saturday Night and uh, Secondhand Lady and even uh, even Capricorn Man. They all got their classic. You know, it, it, they, these really could have been all 7-inch sort of uh, singles. It just has that feel of the classic new wave of British heavy metal stuff. At times, even a little bit of 70s influences. Uh, I mean... Uh, one of the biggest bands I can put, I can compare some of these uh, in order, uh, just musically, and kind of can tell that what they were really were into when writing these songs had to have been, of course, bands like UFO and, uh, to an extent, even maybe early Saxon. You know, they could have been also listening to a lot of early Judas Priest, uh, and, uh, for example, to like early U- uh, UFO, uh, just. Any sort of, or even Budgie and all of that, you can hear a lot of the classic sort of British uh, early heavy bands. That's what you tend to really hear on this one. That's again were the big blueprints for, of course, the new wave or British heavy metal movement and what those bands are influenced by. Same ones that you can really can hear that really bleeds through some of these songs. And again, there's, it, it just comes up very sincere and everything. However, again, there are some slower songs, uh, slightly more mid-paced in a way that's really heard in songs like Rather Night and Capricorn Man. The clo- And there again, they're, but they've got a heaviness to them and it works. Again, you can really can hear the 70s influences on this one. And mostly, I'm mostly comparing to bands like UFO and so on. Again, the early British heavy bands... That's what you tend to get from from these two songs. Really, the closest that you'll ever get to more new wave or British heavy metal inspired ballad on the album is in uh, in the chains, which is again the album's sole ballad, and it is the longest song on the album. And it at least uh, clocks in at the time like the five minutes and nineteen seconds. That's a really interesting one. Again, this might have probably the closest to more of your typical new wave or British heavy metal uh, ballad. Very similar to maybe something you would have heard of at least the really early Iron Maiden albums or something, you know, like that, where it's, or even uh, Quartz or something, you know, it's just really has that almost very proggy feel, the way it begins, it's very melodic, but it, it, it could, and with the phaser effects and whatnot, it's very typical of this period, because again, it's all influenced by the 70s uh, heavy bands, you know, that's what it's inspired by. And, and it's pretty much heard on this song, and it flows through it. So, there you go. Again, uh, there are some really great... Uh, there's actually some songs I really dig off of here. I really do dig, of course, the opening song, Hey You. I really do dig, you know, uh, Running the Line, Rather Night. Uh, second, uh, Saturday Night might be the fastest song on the entire album. It's definitely more closer to me, more of a straight-up speedy rocker. This right here, at times, is what also another sort of... You can hear some characteristics of, of course, the early new wave or British heavy metal movement. This is that, that kind of sound. That This is that kind of style. Just It, it goes for the more boogie-like, but it just comes off very little choppy. But that's what you expect from those kind of bands, because it's just playing fast. Just to face fast, it's not riffing and everything, but it's just the whole, uh, overall idea and the uh, of, of course, just trying to add in a really boogie rocker. But it just comes off a little more, the overall attack just comes off a little more 
just chopping ways, a little sloppy. But that's just what some of those British bands did. Even though, again, the Oz were Finnish. But it's just that same sort of idea, that same sort of mentality. Just, just hammer it down and not really give a shit whether or not it comes off of what you were expecting to come off as. It's just that the whole idea is to get a real fast boogie collar kind of rocker, but just comes off more, a little more rough around the edges. But that's, that's kind of the charm to a song like this. Again, it's not remarkably amazing, but you get what they wanted to do. And I think that that's the thing that I tend to really admire in everything about this. And on most of the album, it's something I tend to admire. It's, again, not the greatest thing ever, but at the same time, there's something I, I can admire. I can admire the overall passion at times, even the overall sincerity uh, of the songs. Again, uh, it's not they're not trying to think of, let's see, see if this is going to be great for radio play or anything. No, this is more about, fuck it. This is the songs we got, we dig them, and we're going to throw it onto here, and we're going to play it uh, with as much conviction as we can, because, again, we're trying to promote our name. That's all it is. It basically has a... That's why even the time length and everything of this album, it just seems like the band was like... Uh, it, we're almost were put on a little bit bit of a time stamp or something. Like, it's almost like uh, if their lives had somewhat depended on it in a way. That kind of mentality was probably was running through into the studio, maybe, when recording this. And hoping that they get something out to kind of tour for and maybe sell at shows or in record shops. That's about it. So that's all, all really it's stuff I tend to really admire about bands. Not that they care about they're going to get a fucking radio play. They just want, like, this is it. We're trying to get our name out. And that's why I seem to really get from the first Oz album. So there we go. Again, uh, their debut album. Again, uh, they kind of really start mentioning the name that, that this went under when it got released. Of course, Typhon's uh, Gramophon's la sub-label Wave. It went under the title of heavy metal heroes though also with the uh sub name hey you which was also was pretty much planted onto the actual album cover and that's about it i don't have an actual copy of this album i only have what downloaded um, loss of strips or something of this sound or just regular really good vinyl mp3 rips or something because uh, trying to obtain the sound can be either easy or it can be difficult and sometimes again it can uh, be at times money and usually with me uh, money is always going to go towards something else. Still though um, I was able to still listen to the sound and spend years listening to it and be familiar. But again uh, I don't really have an original copy of the fur of the album with of course uh, with the crack records cover. Which, again, was just a really good band shot of the band. You know, just a nice photo shot of the band uh, just playing. I mean, it's a great kind of photo anyways. But they at, le at least the original Crack Records uh, album had at least uh, artwork. The one that was released through Typhon Gramophon's Wave, uh, it was just a str straight up logo, title, black background. No, and that's about it. And what you can see right now, which is actually a scan that was from uh, Strapato, who of course uh, ran, uh, who runs at least still the Heavy Metal Rarities Forum, even ran the uh, the Rare and Obscure Middle Blog Spot, and of course the channel on YouTube of the same name. And that's is where, where the scan came from and everything, and that's where of course uh, the vinyl rip of course came from uh, to begin with. So that's where I was, you know, listening to and so on. Uh, that's where it came from, and it's a really, it was a really good scan. But you just get a good idea of what it pretty much looks like, anyways. And again, it's so boring compared to the original cover, which had again that Crack Records released. It just had a, a straight up actual photo shot and everything. It looked at least somewhat more interesting, and that's about it. I think it's, a, I think Wave did a or Typhon Gramophone did a terrible idea with. So either way, there it is. The first album from Oz, again, not the most remarkably, you know, amazing album, but it's far from the worst thing ever. And I think it's a really good sort of time capsule to what, what they were like, what they were like with at least the original four guys and so on. Because again, after the album was released, they would have been gone and they would have been replaced. And uh, the people that, of course, that replaced them because of instead of, uh, being succumbed to sticking to a new, uh, just having just four guys and becoming a five guy kind of band. 
because again, besides, of course, uh, Ape D. Martini and Mark Roughneck ended up uh, coming to the band was, uh, I mean, they went by Synodiums for, of course, uh, Fire on the Brain. They went by, uh, someone went by the name of Speedy Fox. Somebody went by the name of Juka Homie. And of course, then, of course, you got uh, Spooky Wolf, who, of course, sadly had passed away in 2013. But that became the lineup, at least for at least the lineup lasts up until decibel storm because anything uh some of the lineup can end up changing after uh they somewhat got back together in the early 90s and released that roll the dice album which the lineup was slightly different on that one in a way but still uh that was even the last down for a long time up, up until uh 2011's uh, burning leather so there we go which some of the members that were a part of at least the fire on the brain album and so on came back so that's about it so, the self-titled debut from Oz. Again, if you have ever heard this album from these guys, again, it's not very easy to come across of online or even out in the wild. Still, if you had a chance of listening to this album, again, uh, if you had any sort of thoughts with this album, again, if you have ever heard it and everything, uh, you whether it be positive or negative, you can leave them in the comments section below. But if you have never heard this album, it is definitely an interesting listen, but it's not really the most uh, worthy listen. Like, it's something that you have to really go out and find and listen to. Again, it's on YouTube. You could check it out. So that's about it. So, hope all of you enjoyed. This is Harry Thrash. I'm out, and I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.